Flat Earth British, Martin Lietke speaking. Hi guys, welcome back to the great Flat Earth British Think Tank for a little extra post for you all here today. Um, an extra piece of the puzzle has now fallen into place, which I've come to share with you all here this evening. Okay, and it's a bit of a mystery that's been ongoing in Flat Earth British, okay, which is now solved, thankfully. So I hope you all enjoy this. Please share this out, and this will be a short post, shorter than usual. Anyway, for the longest time, we have been looking into these anomalous bollards that are all over antiquity. Here's two of the Vatican. Okay, we have proposed on Flat Earth British, this is part of the circuit board city energy grid transference, as in when a chain goes across or maybe even not, the charge can be passed from one bollard to the other. You find them everywhere in antiquity. They're not necessarily all made of wrought iron. Some of them are made of more of a crystalline structure of stone, but they're all over antiquity. Now they all share a common theme I'm finding, these wrought iron ones, which is a decorated or serrated top, okay? Now, what is the reason for that? To stop you taking a cat up and down here, maybe, but they are in the most anomalous places. Also, lugs. You see these in city streets in Europe, I'm not sure about America, but maybe even the wrought iron um, drain covers are part of this technology. But these lugs, you can see, and these are also these chains. You can see these in most cities. So these are from the Golden Age of Tataria, the decoration, and they will transfer a charge. Not that you could touch this and get a belt, like an electrocuted fence for cattle, but it'd be a subtle charge, something a constant that would take it and charge, okay? Here's what I think. They're everywhere, as you can see, two here, almost buried. And these lugs, these are all over Russia. They definitely, have a, a sense of technology about them but they have been anomalous we don't know what they do but we've had images of them for quite some time and we have pondered what their use was it's part of the Tatarian free energy network we have evidence that this is the case right now guys and you see these serrated tops you see these little lugs, lugs on top these so they all share these common themes these certain types also this like something is removed maybe it's very smooth and these serrates so it's all that effort just to go by a crappy old wooden gate and a crappy old bit of wall in to protect that crappy old bit of wall in when this you know is really good quality yes maybe even these part of energy transference for the circuit board cities that were Tataria or are now but this free energy so this again the same serrates this one looks like it may have been altered and as i said you find them in the most obscure of places so i'm, I'm gathered that these two ballads are to protect this brick wall or this arch in london somewhere are they this crappy bit of old brickwork needs protecting so you don't drive into it maybe but what about these and there so they are not to protect this coin or this corner here or there are they they are deep uh, so they've been in mud and or they've been buried through time here for energy transference into that building here and here the quality and the effort just stinks that they're doing something else everything else in that picture is to shit excuse my french everything in that picture is except for these exquisitely made raw time bollards energy transference the same serrated tops fanned out over a bridge to take a charge across a river also the wrought iron with technasmia in inlaid possibly sigils etc maybe for energies bad who knows i don't like the look of this one uh, across a bridge as well and energy transference down long long avenues using chains and bollards these bollards having the same serrated top as they have in other parts of europe so What's the score with them then, guys? What is the score with them? Well, we got some evidence of what these exactly do, or one of their purpose, probably dual purpose. Excuse that. I keep pressing the wrong button. So, this was 
found now I go through Pafe newsreels all the time I do get copyrighted for them though so I'll speed it up or I'll just scroll through it better so what this video is guys from Pafe newsreels is world's first mobile phone 1922 hold that thought and I've shown evidence of this sort of technology years before this and I am proposing there is no problem for them to have this a hundred years prior because nothing new under the sun but check this out so two ladies come down a beautiful mud flooded avenue okay and they got their mobile phone but it's run flat so what do you do in your reality when you want to charge up your phone you plug it into your wall or your mains or you plug it into your computer yes ladies show the people how you charge your phone in 1922 what you connect it to a bollard the same bollard with these serrated tops but the lug is on there now and that gives you a charge it's active are all bollards active check this out guys bingo they're live all right or they were then so she's got a charge now she can get a signal wireless signal now she got a battery charged kuching and she needs a signal so she uses her umbrella <laughs> as some sort of dish or antenna to get her signal and now she get through to the wirelessly to the operator operate service which number you call in and they give you a bit of uh, music yeah you know one time guys in the past the far off distant past you used to be able to phone a number right on the telephone that would tell you the time no shit i know nothing stranger than reality so i'll show you once once more i'll give you the links and check it out for yourself these ball ads you can get charged up on your phone in 1922 so that mystery solved now we know what they do <laughs> and it's extra extra evidence of what we are proposing is definitely the case guys circuit board cities free energy networks for the golden age of Tataria, taken by a pack of wild animals and we told you the beast was growing and now the beast is fully grown and it's on us thankfully there's a resistance and thankfully thankfully we got a breakaway civilization which i'll talk about now in a minute now pretty excellent hey guys and the umbrellas that might be a little bit of an answer to what's going on with them and so they're a the technology too so it's two bingos in one little video coaching now extra stuff to have a think about people have been talking to me in my comments what the freaking else are you doing now in my comments about th there's a film out called melancholia and i've talked about the melancholia code three years um it's concerning a depiction of a a Phoenician um, watching a comic come in now some of the things that we talked about yesterday on my live post concerning the Phoenicians being in the water or all, all of this water is information and we may be materializing them in, in the clouds which are shown exactly like we have been talking about in all of these depictions do you see in this case bringing storms and tempests this is the jewish model of earth the box the room in this case a, a circle where we're in and you are hell below which is tartarus chaos below us and then they show just north africa and europe at this time as their world with water all around and this is the gibraltar straits uh, columns of hercules but what is interesting is they show ether, so in here in the dome with us, and all of the luminaries in the dome themselves. So it's quite a good one. You get that in most ancient uh, cultures anyway. They all say pretty much the same thing. It's only this Western theology goes with heliocentrism, because it's ruled by a bunch of evil, greedy, cowardly little shits, which have come unstuck. 
And I can say that with all confidence because there's nothing they can actually do to moi, not anymore, that they haven't done already. So, she's asleep and there's a demon blowing something in her ear with a bellows. Is it like the devil's whisper? And these Phoenicians, which are really strange looking guys, and we're thinking it's all, they come up from the water, they are four forms, and they are essentially, you just get a bad feeling about it all with them. It's not us, not who we were in the Tatarian golden age. Now this is something I got on my wall in my bedroom, and it's an intriguing little map because it shows you the comets which I'm going to post about in the next week or so because somebody asked me my comments but I have covered them much and I have been talking and saying the comments bring problems when they arrive and I've been prostrating that they are also a tech you can see them proposed on here comets galore one as a sword fiery chariot all the way around they show you comets shooting stars and they're in with Phoenicians. In this case, you've got a dog head and Phoenicians. Dragons. So, yeah, it's a fantastic map and it goes in layers. And then you come down to there's a world map, which is like an azimuth or equidistant. And then in the northern regions, you see like a mining operation, so which this place is or was a giant's mining operation. And in the middle, it looks exactly like something out of the Voynich manuscript. Um, water swirling, if that's what that is. Could be plasma, can't tell. In the centre of uh, this place. But they got like trees on a circle all the way around. So it is Jesuit, as you can see up here. Elementaries and it's Jesuit with their sort of thinking but intriguing they have a mercy mouth for equidistant and in the past giants where you have to keep giving them chickens bringing them stuff to appease them otherwise um i guess they got a bit pissy i don't really know <laughs> feed that giant so the titans is there a chance that they can come back so the Phoenicians in this case, uh, this one's made of stars, which is why I was proposing on my last post our Phoenician stars, because this one is certainly, but there's a projected, uh, basically a mirrored, re reflective beam of what we have prostrated could be some sort of projection from a lensed sun, which looks like a movie projector. Basically, you're in a movie. Um, <laughs> and who are the props in your play? You play in the parts which you fall from the start. Was an honest one. Now do I plead an actor indeed? Yeah, super tramp. Definitely, definitely big social engineers. The crime of the century. Have a listen to that. What are they planning now? The crime of the century. So, proposed on this last post, last post, the last post on this channel was the Phoenicians uh, clouds. Well, this is the case. They are showing you them constantly on clouds, pouring water, energy transference, information transference. The trees also, the bushes, the whole place is vibrant with energy and information transference. The Phoenicians themselves, which is shown in one family if you ask me okay of this information is here's melancholia she sits in wait she has the board game which is a number code um the hourglass the bell ding ding comic comes in reality's reset and then they do some sort of judgment because this is a test to see who's going to believe the bullshit out there or not let's see how long it takes them you know we guys We've come so far as, as people, haven't we? And let's not let them fuck this up for us now, eh? We've come too far. The prize is too great. We will not lose this. We won anyway. Can't lose it. Can't lose it if you've already won. It's just a matter of time before they fuck off. If 
excuse my French, again. So here's the Phoenicians brought in the Middle Ages on extravagant boat-like craft with a phoenix. The whole narrative of the phoenix rising from the flames is plasma discharge and the rising of culture after a, a Phoenician reset. This one, she has many headed cobras. She looks like she's got an elongated head as well. So, this will not be a dramatically long, long vlog. I've got quite a lot to show you. We've got a couple of outings this week. My friend visited with me and my son. And we went out and looked at some archaeological stuff. And we'll have a little look at them in a minute as well. So that'll be fun. And some strange engravings from Hieronymus, is it? Well, it looks like Hieronymus type Bosch stuff. He just painted an obscure, weird past. But here are the dog heads. And they show many, many depictions with a horrendous, really bad scene going down. Yeah. Basically, I know it sounds terrible, but I've been saying for years now like that they go nuts on us. And in some cases, they eat us. What if, you know, we're all supposed to be doing something else, like basically mining gold, we haven't been really doing as we're told. Maybe the people who've been doing as they're told will be okay. <laughs> and what's the score with the hats? Why is everybody in antiquity have a hat? Civilization spiraling. See this? plasma waves destruction so I did have a message from somebody who said they're going to tell me something but they wanted a private call I'm like well private calls not going to be no different to talking to me in an email you know because basically they watch all um, saying something big is coming next week and no shit Sherlock but not very specific whether it's it so this is a freaky jesuit image you've got solomon the great the magician up here doing a masonic handshake because it's on you know masons the metaphysical realm on this tree of life and then you get the spiral which is like dna like the spiral in and out and then you've got the dna spiral down here as well and then what you get is like endless people walking up these caverns, but they're giants. This guy's a giant. These are little. You can see that. Out of the water again. And these watering plants don't seem too bothered about anything. They're sinking. Okay. And the horn of plenty. Big smiley face. Sol's son is the Phoenicians. This is showing you how they infiltrated us by the look of it. Seeds from the water, the information. So a tree. Mm, for humanity. It's suspicious as frig. But what a cool image. There's so much to depict uh, depicted in that image. I've shown it many times. Um this is something we talked about quite a while, is the comet of 1814 and 1812 excuse me now the comet arrived in 1811 it was seen right through 1812 it was witnessed by napoleon it's called napoleon's comet to Kushba's comet it's got all sorts of names but it brought a reset these people know this is going to bring shit because it's so close but this guy he's looking at them because he knows he knows and understands telephone truth of this place and the fact that you shouldn't really get involved with it because it's out of our control it's nature it's the natural way some people we all get ascended it's just the end of a tiny little fragment of the story guys being tested you fail Psst. groundhog day but uh, they can't because we broke it and they can't reset it because we broke it as far as i know so Fortuna, he's a little guy, isn't he? A little giant. So she's a giant. She got an orb. Phoenician kneecaps, cause she is a Phoenician. 
And she's got wings, so it's active charge. Not sure what's happening there. So it's another winged Phoenician. And the narrative of this uh, dude who eats babies, which is a Phoenician thing because they got like a death cult going on, Babylonian death cult. And this is another reset from that very strange time of the French Revolution. The French Revolution. And what you see is a Phoenician in the clouds, the information of Bache's plasma discharge. Civilization this side pleading and begging. And the same orb, which always looks metallic. And Wheel of Fortune, I guess. And he's arriving from the snow. Hmm. It's not a very French theme, but as you can see, trouble. Okay, there she is again, Melancholia. Pissed off, waiting. This is such a coded picture. But there's a film, Melancholia, I have seen it. It was a bit boring and slow, but again, with a comet or the orb. Waiting. There's one there with the rainbow that they're using now with the pande pandemic as their emblem, sort of telling us. Plus, the rain's over, isn't it? So, Dura, uh, 5, 10, and it is the same message. The Hall of Antiquity gives you the same message. This is supposed to be Mary, Queen of Scots. It says Maria Scrotuma, so probably got a pair of bollocks. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, from the year. No, she's a fine looking woman. I couldn't look at it for very long. Um, a J583 J we have here. A J583 for Maria Scrotum Meregina. So, Mary Queen of Scots, who wanted to basically kill um, Elizabeth I. But see these? They're a tech, they hold air inside, so whether they keep your head cool, but it's a really strange thing, isn't it? It doesn't look nice, it's actually really, really silly. But they all wear them in the Middle Ages. Very, very iffy. And it's always in the clouds, do you see now, guys? So, I had an email earlier, and somebody said to me that we should be careful of the fog and I've talked about bad air and I've talked about my asthma for years now and I definitely think it's a thing bad air, night air they call it and this, this is from an old German woodcut I'm sure you've seen it before but they, sorry I can't imagine it but they do show a lot of orbs on UFOs showing up in the sky there's been many uh, instances of this and active Antiquitech being attacked, so for some reason they need to attack the top of a tower that has an Antiquitech device which is showing to be active. Okay, note the top of these domes, don't they look exactly like the tops of those bollards, guys? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think they are. So, why you would want to attack a building is to take out its technology like so would you disagree this is not the case well that's what the depictions are actually showing us aren't they so attack that tech so here's a strange little thing um, obviously a beautiful big spire but I can't tell you where it is, but what is weird about it is, well, it's all mud flooded, it's an old world, this look, even looks like a fireplace, um, and there's just a tree in the middle of the street, because it's mud flooded, everyone's just coming back. You know, how is the tree in the middle of a street, and they ever have cats, or what have you? It's a very strange place. So it's sort of the artist showing you, really, the, and look at the antiquity, guys. This stuff's around now. And look at these two fellas, you yeah. The Phoenicians. Oh, sorry, there they are. There. Yeah. So, if I was as has to guess, I'd say that was probably 17th century cryptids. We talk about these quite a lot on Flat Earth British. And this. So, 
Phoenician fire sword, and what it says, I've shown many times, this is the number game. If you're good with maths, you might be able to work it on pinpoints when exactly we get reset it, if. Um, but it says all those in the laurel are good. All those in the serpent are evil. So the serpent, active charge. Your serpent eating its tail here, if that's what it is, dragon. But completing an eight, an infinity eight, two number games. Some al al alchemical symbols for luminaries, etc. Planet body, bodies, etc. Libra, I see. So, really strange. This looks like a Solomon sigil it's on the bottom here. And this is uh, supposed to be a map of the universe, but it's in a box, and it's the four angels because we're in a box. So the alchemical weirdness, the pyramid, standing on suns, it's it's that, it's the information, it's the water. I'm going to talk about this on my next post oh, quite a bit. I'm going to talk about infected air a bit, as in non-affected air, excuse me, as in yawns. Uh, a big clue to how this reality works. Okay, guys, the fact that we can catch a yawn. Somebody told me... Um, in my comments that they call it their chicken yawning chickens yawn guys who knew and these the homunculus guys the homunculus uh, they were test tube humans if you like uh, super intelligent far more intelligent than their creators um, only as little as you can trace information about um, the making or the producing of homunculus even in the 1800s guys okay this is like you know alchemy um, was right the way through the 1800s as well so this stuff was happening in my mind they've teched it up and this shit's going down even heads in jazz is going down so you get the all C and I because we're being watched all right we've never not been watched we've never been alone Keeps on watching you. So there's uh, Lucifer. He's got his bottle of shit. And he's in fire. And there's a Solomon sigil there. What does it say? Gentithia or Agnetith. Yeah. Ooh, it's difficult to say which is the beginning. Tia. Oh, two A's as well. But yeah, this is an electrical circuit. It means something. And this looks like John D doing some weird stuff with summoning okay here's the same serpent eating its tail the cycle the resetting cycle homunculus serpentage very 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 spooky stuff and okay sun cold light of the moon and the serpent and the convergence point here. Oh. A microcosm tech actually of how this place works. But again the Phoenicians are in the water. In the cloud skies. The water. They're in the water. Itself. They travel here through the water. Which is why these are all over antiquity. And they come through these maybe portals. Black mirrors scathing mirrors but here they are guys in the information in the plants in the trees in this paradigm but can be neutralized so there's a solomon sigil as well this is the seal of solomon light solar uh, masculine joined with dark lunar feminine as above so below in a masonic solomon thing as within so what's that as within so without again it's the four angels and this is the structure of this place i don't know about four angels watch the greatest secret never told on this channel and the celtic italian channel more homunculus breeding so the patron and the mother and the father, Sol and Luna, have managed to breed in a homunculus jar a lady that's weird and somebody else.
But look at their claws. They're hiding their true identities. What they read. Yeah. Okay. So that's out the Voynich manuscript and Branxis. Also got serpent legs going on. Also a head like an Anubis or a chicken or an eagle, a cryptid. So these are out the Voynich manuscript. And I 100% think they're Phoenician. They're watery feet. And three, four witches. Painted by Dura. Dura, four witches. So um, I don't know, it's what well, year yeah, that is. 1497, I-497. Um, I guess in its men that invented the witches should be all naked because there's no, you know, it's not really a rule, is there, that all witches should be going around naked. I'm sure they dress some of them. <laughs> but I think that was a man invention. Yeah, 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 definitely. Witches are always naked, man. In this case, the Phoenicians are always naked. Look at him, flaming hair. Phoenician. The devil, the new... The devil or the New Jersey dance, the horrible relation of facts which uh, test place a few took place a few weeks ago in New Jersey, and that was in 1797. The devil turned up, and this is 1511 Modura chopping someone up, as you can see. The Phoenicians, check them out. Natura. Many heads of animals, many breasts, all on a plinth. Yet, appears to be alive. Why is that? This is an early picture, but it's definitely showing the mind's eye. Okay, showing the mind's eye here. He's, he's awakened his mind's eye, and it's at the inception of building Tower of Babel and Antiquitech. Or is he projecting? But that's his, his mind's eye is slapped open, and he's seeing this. Um, and that's from um, a 16th century or 17, early 17th century depiction. Buildings as technosmia with organs and the whole thing would be like a big speaker. Okay, now outings. Now I went out this, this week. Uh, my friend Mel came over and visited me and my son Lawrence. We went out for, for uh, some visits on the South Wales coast. So I'm going to show you now because it was very enjoyable. And you know I know Mel, who's always in my chat feed, and we've been friends for a long time now. Which comes with my lovely, lovely dog. Love this dog, Mercy. Okay, this is Mercy. I'll go R. Act three. Ah, it's the most loving dog. It's a Ridgeback cross pitbull thing. So um, yeah, we went off for some outings. I'll show you now. We went to just local South Wales coast. Um, to go to a um, unbelievable rock uh, formation which we'll look at now um, which we were at these cliffs um, and they collapsed a day or two later I'll, I'll show you now this is in Cardiff Centre on the side of a gallery just off of Queen Street somebody has done an apocalyptic shadow man wall fragments of glass very 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 spooky indeed um, on an art gallery in Cardiff. Check this out. How sinister this is. Where the, where was his head at? It's like fragments of glass. Can you see? It's like a message in that somewhere. But I have a little study of that. So it's awesome to be um, doing these little extras. I hope you do enjoy, it, guys. I've got plenty I could bring to you on a way of extras, but that um, with the ball ads is a bingo. So I had to do that. So this is pretty um, Georgian part of Cardiff. As you can see, the beautiful Georgian houses. There are lower levels on these, and this is some sort of art gallery with satanic stuff on the side. Never seen it before, and I couldn't tell you how long it's been there. There it is. The artist's name was actually under here, but I didn't actually get it. It was a three-barrel name. There it is David Dulla. Okay, let's get that a bit closer. David Dealer. Not sure. 
David Delis, I think. Let's have a look closer. And I'll show you make that out. Mand. Yeah. Or hand. David Della Hand. Yeah. David Della Hand did that. Highly sinister artwork. Got dunces hats. Devils, demons. Strange thing to put on a freaking building. It's not exactly oozing love, is it? So, um, this is um, in a botanical gardens near Cardiff called Panath. And we are on the basically South Wales coast where I live um, in Cardiff. And basically, it's on the Gulf Stream. So, we get warm tropical waters. Um, and this is the sort of fauna you will get in my region little beautiful Welsh orchids and this sort of beauty so so yeah it was a really nice visit a really nice time I've got to be honest so there's my my son Lawrence Lee who's Welsh dragon metals see him there yeah cool in it um with lovely shot that is with all that beautiful stuff that's a better shot so look at that garden that's my boy Lawrence Leaker with his hair going on <laughs> Other uh, botanical gardens on the promenade of Panath in South Wales. So there's me, Merridge, and Lawrence hanging out in a um, place which give us a free drink on Panath Pier. Merridge, June sunset with Lawrence. So that was cool. Um, this is a device um, a f fisherman left on the beach, which could basically do its own fishing while he went for a walk. <laughs> the future. Now, History lesson, <laughs> what we got here is a place called Lavernock Point. Lavernock Point, have you heard of that? Well, it's where the first transatlantic signal went from here, right on this point, with Marconi, Marconi, across the Atlantic, to Newfoundland, yes. And this is it. Okay, there's a little sort of thing there as well to commemorate it. And you might see the nasty-ass petrol terminal in Cardiff docks. It's a moon. Um, these are two islands out in Bristol Channel, Flat Home and Steep Home. And on this beach, it was um, supposed to be Jurassic, okay guys. Now, what you find is it's full of ancient tree trunks. And they are tree trunks, they're not from pillars of old jetties, this is a tree trunk. And not only that, they follow right the way down. So, in the recent past... And there would have been no sea here. This would have been a forest and not a beach. And what's more? You see, that's a tree. Would you agree? You can see the treeness going on. Yes, it's a tree. So that was a forest. That's a prehistoric sort of thing. Or old. There's also a thing as prehistoric. Uh, that's Mel and Mercy taking photos of stuff. My son picking up bits of glass and beach stuff. The island's in the background. Uh, gets cut off with water each day it's deadly if you get caught in this causeway and um, it's called Sully Island Sully Island well taking pics like David Bailey of that that island there and this um, in the distance here is Porter Z oh sorry Cleveland Clevedon Clevedon in um, Avon um, on a good day you can even see up as far as Avon mouth I'm guessing that's 25 miles from this place here as you can see the ship going in front of uh, Steep Home there. Definitely no curvature going on there, is there? So this was interesting. I just took a photograph because I thought it was a good clue. Um, Yo to, to the past, or liquor owed to the, our past, excuse me. 19 crimes is inspired by those who in the beginning in 1788 were transported to Australia for a life of hard labour. Many did not survive the journey for the sea beaten people who made it ashore they saw a new world awaited them. As the pioneers in this harsh frontier colony they surged uh, I can't see that word it's around the bottle fresh pathways and built new lives from their conquered pasts. Brick by brick so basically they're saying in 1788 a load of people hardly got there alive they got ashore and built that great civilization you see today in australia <laughs> like melbourne and sydney and perth and all of that antiquity going on so they still want poll tax even though we haven't been anywhere because we're not locked down and for what when they just 
put rubbish bags all over the streets of Cardiff. Absolutely fucking disgusting. This was a thumbnail I used this week. A great r response for this thumbnail. I don't know why. Um, it is nice, but it is. I'm hoping, I'm praying that that's a lady. I think it is, though, because of this bit here. So, yeah, fantastic. Um, I blew my mind, this one, because it's supposed to be like shitty medieval beds, aren't they? And this one's beautiful. It looks quilted or even um, air in it. It's just fantastic. So, yeah, we went to a place called um, Landwit Major, which is just down the road, a few miles. And they got lots of antiquity there. There's my son again, Lawrence Leaker. Welsh Dragon Metals, please sub to him. He's just coming up to a thousand subs. He needs a few more. He has 700. And then he can go live and uh, plant him, hopefully. So, this is called Burial Lane. And they got little windows. See, it says Burial Lane. I'm not sure if that would have been a water feature, but pretty little town. Um, and this is interesting. Now, what we got here, guys, is Tinkins Wood. If you Google it now, it will say that it's one of the most important archaeological sites in Europe. They say in Britain, through age, it's second only to Stonehenge. This is a 6,000-year-old site, they say. They say that this Neolithic stone, which I'm about to show you, is the biggest in Europe. And this is only a couple of miles from my house. Tinkins Wood Burial Chamber. Okay. Weighing down the largest scrap stone in Wales, Tinkins Wood Chambered Tomb has stood there for 6,000 years. Still and immovable. Not so the 50 people housed inside. So they found 50 corpses or um, uh, bodies inside, all in fetal position in this one. Their bones uh, may have been removed uh, by their own Neolithic relatives many times. So, bullshit. Skeletons of men, women and children found inside the burial chamber had bits missing. Yeah, because it got eaten. <laughs> it is thought uh, that they were not left to rest in this place, but they were taken out into the light for some special ritual. Well, that sounds sinister. Over time, fewer bones had survived the trip. Rituals may have been taking place in front of the burial chamber. It faces east and is enclosed by projected wing, protecting wings, which we'll look at now. As if to scoop up the rays of the sun of each new dawn. Thousands of years later, the tomb was still respected as the sacred place by people with no memory of its Neolithic builders. Bronze Age people who dug the pit into a mound brought their own burial practices mingling the bones with their dead with domestic animals tinkins would still hold spiritual fascination for us today it's said that it has the power to change you forever being sure on the night of may day or st john's day the 23rd of june or midwinter day you could result in your death madness or you could turn into a poet so all of them are pretty shit. So if you survive death or madness, you end up a poet, apparently. A bad. You get bad for being a bad. This was the site, they say. I think something else completely was going on, and I will show you now. So, 6,000 year old, and they say they dug them up for some sort of ritual, put them back in again. They were all messed up, basically. So here it is. The first thing you will notice is it's been melted this entire stone has been melted you will see so um, this is the capstone itself you can see now on top of it these are these things that catch the rays we'll look at them a bit better now so not what Mary just pointing at okay so as you see here it's all melted out and bubbled so it's taken some meat we were prostrating this thing could have been the side of a wall and just fallen down so just move on it is massive and it is melted and I got a little bit of film to show you as well and they say it's one of the most important sites in the country um, and they just put shitty crude concrete in a crack because there's a big crack running along it right and they just put concrete in it because it's basically almost in two parts underneath you can see the light and they put concrete and what they did they say is they put it on top of a, a 
bollard or a plinth that was built in the First World War, which I'll show you now. There's some sort of names in here and some sort of what looks like a repair, who's hard to say, but everything looks heat affected. You see? Names. Who even knows how long they've been there. More again. Inside this tomb. Very, very atmospheric place to be. As you can see, there was something in that cub cubby hole in the corner. Because uh, there were stones put there. I didn't want to pull them out and find out, though. So this column here was put in in the First World War, 1914, when there was... This was a big mound and they dug it out. Okay. And all the bodies were in here. Interesting, isn't it? I know. We've got all history in Wales, guys. It's so cool. And look at that. Looks like a face. Looks like an alien. But melted, isn't it? It's almost dripped. And this is a highly strange stone here, this one as well. It's all, all like serrated. Almost man made. Somebody was in there and. <laughs> that and Lawrence um, almost like it's serrated or hit when it was soft something going on there isn't it guys what do you say so, it's mercy looking around and there's that really really weird shape hmm it's like terrible stuff on my system then and there it is, melted. Would you disagree this was melted? No, I know. So. And this is the entrance outside. There's some sort of plinth holding this in, but it seems to be more recent uh, work. Look at this. It's like the stone being put in there. And on top as well, it looks like a window was blocked in. So I'm thinking there was something else going on with this big thing it was like it was one side of a wall had fallen over and some of these expended bits in this site this was um what was once a pit um which i stood in uh, which was full of bodies apparently and there's all of these haphazard stones they're not explaining them Look at the size of this thing guys there were stacks of people looking at it the biggest in europe they say and that was also a pit for dedos. But I thought it was a jacuzzi when I stood in it. Also looks like they've got giant remains here. This one looks like a foot or teeth. Like teeth. And here, teeth. See that? And they're just like haphazard stones just tossed around and they all look like them. This one's dressed, but this one looks like teeth. But it looks like they've been melted. You see? <coughs> Melted. Very interesting place to visit. Tinkins Wood, and there's another burial chamber just on the road called St. Livens. It's a little bit smaller. Still a highly interesting place to visit. Melted. Would you disagree? Well, it looks like melting to my eyes. Just that bubbling and pitting. Something is this hot at some stage. Yeah, that's melting. So yeah, it's taking some heat this place. But what a massive piece of stone. So I did, as Malich. I did have ah oh, it's my son, he's waving. Hey Law. I did have a bit of film. So the people So this whole thing is an enclosure and part of this what well, would have been a building. It's ma it's quite big. Part of this and it looked like there was a window blocked here and they blocked it up can you see that which led us to think there was a side of a wall that's just fallen down this way punk punk onto this which was built when they discovered it they say in 1914 and they built that brick pillar to hold up that crack or if it just fallen down landed on a pillar that was the gates to this manor house and it cracked the stone and this was the size of the wall wouldn't that make more sense well it could equally be that case i think or we think yeah strange strange uh, wall that one really strange almost as if they were trying to break out <laughs> Ooh, horrible thought they were excavated in 1914 
and then they had to go off and get blown to pieces in the trenches. So Tinkin's word, medi um, Neolithic burial chambers, but a psyop. The Neolithic era is bullshit. So that was uh, my outings for this week with my son and my friend. Having a brilliant time looking at some antiquity. Hope you enjoyed that. Now, this is Barbaria Discourse Server, okay? And this is our server. I am basically um, a moderator or member of staff here, and I can basically um, allow you to join. Now, John Levy's on here, I reckon. I did send it to him. Um, Campbell from Auto Detective is on here, and other people are on here, look, guys. So sign up, get on here, and we can get you. Um, involved in barrier this is a place we can discuss it um, uh, Guru Baba's on here already proposing a currency for said civilization crypto coin the guy does it uh, John Levy houses castles for one dollar uh, which is posted uh, today I haven't caught that just yet but he told me about it uh, yesterday um, FEB Barbaria uh, off grid survival there I put that up uh, California so you know people are finding out there's Barbaria Queensland there which you can find out about which people are already at okay so hope you enjoyed them images and um, we've got some images of the day and then i'm going to chuck out okay now the great exposition of paris they left this bit in but all of this here was destroyed apparently in a fire this is antiquitech on top here these bits gone now in the modern day if you look at later later photographs uh, but we've got photographs of the fire apparently metal can burn but have a look at the phoenician water look at this is she alive is that alive holy cow guys my mind is blown that can't be a statue. What the flipping hell is going on? It's, it's a mermaid. She's massive and she's got. Holy cow, I can't even imagine. That's just too realistic and scary for my liking. I don't know what's going on. So here's the top hatters technology. We've got one fellow with one off, but look at these Phoenician statues. Never got any clothes. And there's this civilization. Everything you see here, the trickling on, the, um, this thing here, they're all gone in the modern day. This isn't, this is still there, but it's all this civilization that they've taken down and ruined. It was there already bring the survivor the uh, new arrivals in to check this shit out and I can't get my head on that that's freaking me out that's too weird guys come on don't you think that's weird I think Lee sent me this one I've blown my mind Lee yeah wow wow Wow. And here we go again. Palm trees in Paris. Palms. Classical themed architecture under this massive, massive antenna. Antiquitech device. And all of this here. The shells. See the shells? These? All gone. All removed. The whole of this this technology gone in the modern day that's a sweet photo um, these are before and after so it's just to show you how much they've messed this place up okay so before okay Koningsberg before beautiful isn't it this was the civilization just before us and now it looks like a gorilla's video. It's shit now compared to 100 plus years ago. 
hard to believe, isn't it? How they con everyone into thinking we've been progressive. When really, they took the tech out. Observe the clock tower. And now, a featureless nothing. Whatever was in there before, it wasn't a clock, it was tech. Antiqua tech dome. With what looks like a conductor on top. Gatherer. Completely gone. Featureless. Taken away. All of it. The only thing that remains of that is the original balustrade. Here. So I can't see below to see if they've left any of the decoration. So they've removed all the technology on that one. Here. Beautiful mud flood. Huh? Yeah. Beautiful building. Active technasmid at the time. And nowadays. The mud is gone. I dug it out and there's another door underneath we didn't get to see. So. Okay that was the door there. Funny how they put the lightning bolt on, isn't it? You know, like Flash Gordon. This lightning bolt's always a clue, it's a Masonic thing. Telling us about the plasma discharge event. So the door was there. All of this has been taken away. There's doors down here. And a door which would have been down there below ground level. Mud flood. Incredible. Very sweet image. Love that. <gasps> Next one. So, 1900. And the modern day. Let's have a look. Let us see. Well, it's changed this side, hasn't it? There's a, some sort of planty thing coming down there, and here you can see the windows. So they're behind something there. That's quite a good one. Statues have been added, and the columns. Which are different columns. But I look at them. <clears throat> and this is a good example. This is in Brooklyn. Okay. Beautiful mud flood. Uh, and she's there in the modern day. Not too dissimilar. Let's have a look at this side arch. It's more prominent. It sticks out. It's got two columns. It's only the one on that. The front door there, one, okay, that's right. The stairs open out a bit more, look a bit different. And the lower levels are there. So it looks a completely different build in 1872, 1873, and the modern day. So not too many changes, but some. some. Just curious, it's a flat, flat roof on this. <coughs> so. 2019 it's despicable what kind of civilization did they have there in 1941 yeah well everywhere it's like that isn't it in 1941 you get to the modern day it's all gone where's that church world war two i guess so mud flood evidences here or would have been underground. You walked in and out of at one stage. Here's the building now filled in. There it is with the mud, I guess. Back in the day. And the Montgomery Ward. Oh, Montgomery. <laughs> the busy beehive. And that's what was happening in one of these buildings, they tell us. Same place. The spire's gone. This bit remains here. The next bit up, they took the spire down. I wonder why. And that was happening in that building, believe it or not. Montgomery Ward and Co. Okay. Lovely little mud flood image, this one. So you've got this massive, massive thing. The mud is still there. Nothing happening, rocks, mud, vent, people. And she's in the modern day. Lovely shot. Okay, moving on. And 
that's nice what was it like when it was okay oh shit gone why would you leave that to rack and ruin well we know and in the past beautiful gardens 1904 water such attention to detail overhead roads or railways even antiquatech buildings galore beautiful nowadays gone and it's the same for the whole of this western world this christendom whatever they call it they got rid of all the good stuff and they concreted it over any active technasmia buildings you see the portal gone some of the original facade is up here on the top everything else is gone on this building really what a what a crime guys what a crime a bushwick theater back in the day my oh my beautiful absolutely beautiful so excuse me a minute um, I'm coming back um, in a day or so on Flat Earth British Martin Leitka channel I want to thank you for joining me here tonight I hope you enjoyed the stuff that I've showed you it's quite mind-blowing I know and this is some of the ideas we put on last night's post concerning the Phoenicians being hiding in the water because the water don't taste like water water okay i'll be back very soon make sure to share this out make sure to subscribe to this and all of the flat of british channels and peace and love to you all okay and i'll be back very soon okay i enjoyed that fun <laughs>